welcome to Graphic Online Television. And of course, today we have with us one of our darling screen stars, Chris Atto, in studio here with us. We're going to have an insightful conversation on his upcoming project, what he's been up to. Of course, we haven't seen him in a long while on our screens. So he's going to tell us what he's been up to. Hi, Chris. Hi. It feels good to see you again. I'm Absolutely. Good. Yourself? I'm doing well. Mm. I am blessed, highly favored. In fact, I like to say once you wake up in the morning, it's a good day. Once you are vertical, it's a great day. Definitely. But Chris Lavez haven't heard from you in a long while. What have you been up to? Well, uh, just like Jesus Christ, you know, when, when you don't hear from God, it doesn't mean he's not working. Okay. Probably means he's doing the best work. <clears throat> But I have been blessed to have the opportunity to represent Ghana on one of the most coveted platforms in the world, Hollywood USA. And that's pretty much where I've been and what I've been working on. Um, it's been about maybe six or so years in the making. But the film that I've just recently finished shooting, which is called uh, The Magical Society of American Negroes just came out. It, it also premiered at Sundance. Um, and, you know, it's just been a very long journey. There have been a couple of other movies in between, but that's where I've been. That's what I've been up to. And uh, of course, I didn't forget about home. Mm. You know, I came down and brought a Hollywood tea with me and shot a really impactful film. Some parts were shot in LA and some parts were shot here in Ghana. I had the opportunity to direct and act in it. And it also has the likes of Juliette Ibrahim, Ajete Anand, Rosemary Zimu, um, and a myriad of, of other very uh, talented actors. So still here on your screens, maybe some of the things that I've been doing, you know, back home, we haven't had the chance to see, but we will. With all this exposure, what are we hoping to see different in our movie industry? I'm so glad you asked. You know, as a filmmaker, I can tell you that the film industry is very much alive. I've always said it wherever I go, that as long as our stories are alive, then the industry is very much alive. And we are at such a crucial point now that not only are the stories changing, but the ability to tell them properly, which I also have a strong maybe responsibility towards. It's always been a thing because Ghanaian movies have been great. We all grew up with them. And myself had been very picky as to what I do because I do believe that you have to do something and when you do it, you do it right. But that's the exciting thing. I believe that we are at that point where technically, you know, um, we are ready to tell Ghanaian stories on a premium level. But um, you mentioned stories, to tell stories properly. Is that what is lacking in our industry? It's not the only thing lacking. There are a lot of things lacking in our industry, like the money to fund great projects. Great projects demand backing, demand resources. Uh, I have to definitely commend the government and uh, the work of the NFA. Julia Asante has been able to not only attract you know, foreign attention, but with things like the 20% rebate and the 20% discount on equipment that comes in when you try to shoot in Ghana, all these things are encouraging the film industry. Training is really <coughs> important. Training for both our actors on screen and of course crew behind the screens are, are, are things that will also help change the industry. When I had the opportunity to shoot my film here, the title called Nine, I had the opportunity of employing 165 crew members, you know, that I believe I hopefully changed their lives, not just by giving them employment, you know, which is another thing that film does, which is another reason why I'm encouraging, you know, people out there not just to get into it, but to aid us. Um, but I believe that their lives were affected because they only or not only receive the training, the experience from the Hollywood team that we brought in and working with, with crew members from Ghana, South Africa, Nigeria, USA, uh, Hollywood. This is what we need more of. That training will translate into the work that we're doing, into the work that's to come beyond, you know, now and the, and the next generation and what they'll turn okay. out. Okay, new project, it's a Netflix project. 
Well, at the moment, well, we'll talk about that. But is it okay. a Netflix project? No, it's a it's an independent project that okay. may end up on Netflix or end up on Prime or one of these streaming platforms. But first, it will go to cinema right. in various countries. So some of these platforms, Prime, Netflix, they are big elsewhere in other countries. Mm -hmm. What are we not doing right as stakeholders to get our presence felt? I'm glad you asked. Aside from some of the things that I've mentioned. The reality is, we are such a discerning on, uh, audience now. Not just Ghanaians, but the entire world. So if you churn out something that doesn't look good, people can see it. When you put on Netflix at the moment, the maybe the major content that you find African is South African or Nigerian. How do we get in the mix? We get in the mix by some of the things that, like I said, in my own way, I think that will change things. A movie like Nine that has been shot properly should be able to match the kind of movies that Netflix is getting from Nigeria so that when you turn on the TV and you look for Ghanaian movies, they're there as well. And I can't do it alone. You know, and this is, this is again, an opportunity to congratulate the work that the National Film Authority is putting into, into, into everything. And then into, you know, of course, encouraging individuals out there, writers, actors, you know, anyone training in film, DPs, cinematographers, I would say that the training is important. You need to be able to wake up in the morning and be on it. You need to be on it 24 hours a day just to be able to be perfect. This is how our industry will grow. All right, deductively, we're not churning the right content for these platforms. Well, it's not about the right content. It's about the quality of the content. Okay. So Ghana is not producing quality for these platforms? Ghana is not producing enough quality content to be able to make it onto these platforms. So what's, what's the way forward for producers, stakeholders and the likes of yourself? Well, for stakeholders, as I've said now, we are encouraging the backing of finance. You know, Nigerian movie industry has a lot of finances being pumped into it. There's a, a lot of money from oil and gas. There's a lot of money from individuals. And that's the Nigerian movie industry. But this is us. We are proudly Ghanaian. And I know that there are investors out there who don't understand the film industry. How do you get your money back? What's your uh, uh, RRO? How do you get your returns on money? And I'll tell you very confidently, there are distribution channels that allow you to be able to get your money and recoup your money back and profit back. But the industry needs help. The, the industry needs people like yourselves to be able to back people like myself and anyone else there that's talented, that wants to tell stories and tell them effectively. All right. So Ghana tourism, of course, Ghana has been on the map for a little while. You know, film can play a very critical role in getting us even higher. Absolutely. Yes. What are we doing to get into that space? I believe we are already in that space. E. Again, having the opportunity to be out there in the world and representing Ghana, I can tell you that the world is very interested in us. Everybody wants to come to Ghana. Wherever you go, everybody asks you, oh, where are you from? You're from Ghana. Oh, Abedi Pele. You know, oh, I know your president. We have one of the coolest presidents in the world. But what it also means is that this is a time where change is happening all around us. And we can't let it go by. If a ship doesn't know where it's headed, I've always said that it will end up being blown in any direction. We have to make sure that doesn't happen to us. So crisis everywhere, crisis in Hollywood. How do we get some of our actors in that space to make a mark? It's a great question. Uh, one of the things that I've learned from my time out there is that you have to be excellent. Oprah Winfrey has often said that the best deterrent to racism and, you know, things like that would basically be for you to be excellent. And excellence means it doesn't just drop on your lap. It means reading every day, expanding your mind. It means practicing. If this is what you want to do, you need to practice, practice, practice. You need to be so good that you too can be called out to come and act and be paid $40 million. What's the difference between Ajit Anand, who is such a great actor, and Dwayne Johnson? It's location. And the world is such a small place now that you cannot sit in Ghana and say, oh, yes, I've done it. Let me tell you why. It's not about fame, extra fame. It is 
not just about dreams, it's a responsibility. You asked a very important question. How do other actors do it? They follow my footsteps and it hasn't been easy. But what I'm telling you is that it's possible. It's possible. It's possible to have an idea that someday you can be standing amongst great people and great actors that the world recognizes and you're standing there and you're representing in your own small way from Jamestown, British Accra. Oh, you know? <laughs> it's exciting talking to Chris. <laughs> this is Graphic Online Television. Still on Projecting Ghana. There has been calls for the introduction of new faces, perhaps to change the face of our movie industry. What do you think about this? I think that either always be new faces. I think that what's important is I, I remind the new faces not to embrace the spotlight because, again, of the fame and the other things it brings, but to recognize that it's a platform where people will watch, people will learn, people will listen. And so if you want to be in a position like this, you have to be ready, you have to be well read and you have to be experienced. You have to be ready for the experience. You know, sometimes the prayer is, oh God, please use me, use me, use me. And then that prayer ends up becoming, oh God, why me? But you know what, Eid, we all have a calling. Definitely. I'll round it up also by putting in, because you also asked about tourism. I think that this is a great time for tourism. With the year of return happening, there are a lot of foreigners coming in. Yes, there are things that I don't particularly like about that. I think that a lot of prices have definitely inflated and it could be also because of that. But it has given us a chance to be exposed to the world. In terms of tourism, I believe we've made a good amount of money this past December, or the one that passed. Is it a good thing for Ghana? Yes. We're trying to keep Ghana on the map. We want to encourage foreigners to come here and shoot. There are rumors of films like Girls Trip 2 wanting to be shot here in Ghana. You know, and I say rumors because maybe it's not confirmed, but even for that to be talk, that means that somewhere, someone remembers this country. Definitely. And, you know, I want to remind people to remember to be patriotic, to remember where we're from, to remember who we are. I can tell you, I've been to so many wonderful places in the world. I've lived in Nigeria, I've lived in South Africa, I've lived in the US, I've been in London. And they say charity begins at home. We're all so blessed. We are smack in the middle of the equator, they say Ghana is. And what that is and what that means is a blessing. Each and every single one of us and everyone watching, I want to remind you that you are here with a purpose. And if you forgot about it and you're watching, then I'm reminding you today. And whatever that purpose is, keep asking yourself. Keep going within. Find it. If it is to be in the position that we're in and to work in film, find me. But remember at least my words. Training. Be ready. Because you have to be ready to be in the room when the opportunity calls. If you're in the room and you're not ready, it doesn't matter. Okay. Interesting. But Chris, the exposure and everything, hasn't been worth it? Has it been worth it? Is it paying off? Has the exposure paid off? You know, naturally, I think that I'm a very quiet individual. And if I didn't do what I did, I'd probably be very quiet and under a rock somewhere. So there are times where I feel like, because of what we do, the exposure is detrimental you know because we're all human beings and we're all on our journeys and we all make mistakes and everybody tumbles and everybody falls but when you are in the public lie and you tumble and you fall then it's like you're not expected to but you know what it gives me an opportunity to remind people that we're all vulnerable and we're all God's children and we're all looking for answers so sometimes is it worth it yes it's wonderful when I walk into a place and someone says, oh, Chris Atto, please come this way. But it's a reminder that, again, it's a platform that people are watching and people can learn from. Interesting. So let's go away from the movie industry a bit. We are you working on a project with kids? Hmm, tell us more. I love it. I love it. You know, ever since I became a father, naturally, you think about the next generation. You think about the kids that are coming uh, coming up 
and recently ways that I think that, that a lot of that thought process has transitioned into is I'm doing a lot of work with the World and Jobs Expo Ghana where the target is to remind the younger generation to start small or to be able to start small from an entrepreneurial point of view and to provide opportunities for them because the truth is a lot of people come out of school today and they're very capable, very trained and unfortunately there is no work. But we're also going through a time where the baby boom days are over. You know, it's not necessarily come out of school and go into a job or a bank with a tie and so on and so forth. There are ways to make money now that if you're a strong entrepreneur, you already have that entrepreneurial sense, then the mobile phone that you have is actually your wealth because you can play with it, but it can also earn you a lot of money. Now let's talk about your big project, Nine. <laughs> mm, I love that. I've, I've seen the trailer. It's like an exciting project. Tell us about it. Thanks for asking. Nine is a story that revolves around a series of mysterious murders that take place and, and play Ghana. And uh, a grieving homicide detective from Los Angeles flies down to Ghana and collides with a, an elite assassin group to basically, you know, overthrow evil or mm. stop everything from happening in, in the evil, uh, evil world's corner. But what it really is, is a combination of all the movies I watched growing up, all the Thursday theaters, all oh. the, um, you know, the, the movies you see on TV and what it is, the digestion of that and pouring it out done properly. So the movie was shot, parts were shot in LA parts were shot here in Ghana and uh, you know apart from the technical side of it like I, I mentioned it it's such a great opportunity to be able to bring some of that home to be able to bring some of the training to be able to bring even some of the the people and the networking that I'm making out there to my country and say hey you know what this is Ghana and it's beautiful yeah. and let's start shooting here uh, this, the movie also stars the likes of Rosemary Zimu, Juliet Ibrahim, Ajete Anand, Pascal Aka um, myself, Chris Atto, and you know a myriad of, of other actors. Alphonse uh, is in there. You know now it's, it just keeps coming to me. Sikao says in there. Uh, Chastity Sanders, Damien Smith, and you know I'm mentioning all these names, and it's a combination of names of actors from so many different parts of the world. And uh, I think honestly that's something I've always wanted to achieve. I don't believe that we can even realize our own glory without comparing or relating it to somebody else and i've always been in a place where i don't think that we should perform or your target should just be home or ghana i think you should whatever it is you're working on think for the world because the world is such a, a small place now interesting how different is this from other projects we've seen mm -hmm. i believe the difference would be in the work uh you know the the fact that I keep mentioning training and know-how and the fact that we had the opportunity to bring a Hollywood team here to Ghana, it just seems to show in the work and, and that's the experience that they have. You know, and like I said, everyone that worked on the set walked away with, with knowledge, you know, but um, how different is it? You have to wait and see nine and tell me. All right. Interesting. <laughs> anyway, that's on the lighter side. You've lived in Nigeria for a while. You're a Ghanaian. Um, if you had to go for Ghana Jollof and Nigerian Jollof, <laughs> which oh, one are you settling for? Man, I mean, you know the answer to that. I know the I answer. I don't to know that. unless you tell me. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So my Jollof is the best Jollof. Yes. And Where is it coming from? Ah, Where's your? I'll invite you to my kitchen. Definitely, I'll join you. But tell uh -huh. us. Because Ghana Jollof has to be the best. The only time that the Nigerian Jollof is 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 uh, is tasty is when it is made in Nigeria. By yourself. By, By yourself. There you go. <laughs> he has caught it. Oh, good. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us today. It's been an exciting conversation with one of our darling screen stars. My name is Mamiya Joa Ponziwa. Catch you soon.